Yeah. Well, yeah. Welcome back. Another episode. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm double double wristed up. Yeah, I'm giving you, out wristies. Yeah, that's that's, that's crazy. a crazy. That's say. not what I meant. But you look like Theo Baker now. No, I look like you got that new that. you got that new Garmin on. You got a little whoop on. A little quick thing about this Garmin, right? So I've bought it. I've noticed. Oh, for some reason, this one's a hundred pound cheaper than the other one, which is on the the Garmin website. So yeah, I've gone and got it. Yep, I've rocked up and. I bought the female version. Ooh, that's nice. So you got quite feminine wrist. So I'm like backing it. A little yeah, bit. I do. I d- that's why I got it because I, I I opted for the smallest option. Yeah. And then now that it's here, I actually think it's glistening and it does suit me. It's glistening. I'm, I, I'm thinking like I might just start buying female clothes as well. Yeah, I've been doing that for years, man. You know the jeans with the small pockets. Yeah, I love it. You know what? That's one thing I would say about being a woman is that you always get finessed with your pockets. Why is it my girlfriend's always asking me to hold her fucking yeah, phone, so jarring. put it in your pocket, and then she goes, "Look, it doesn't fit." Yeah, but that's why, so why got, don't you buy. That's something. why they got the bags, little handbag, put the bag in the handbag. Yeah, yeah. look, oh, look, you know, clutch. a clutch <laughs> when uh, skinny jeans are properly in, like properly in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of I'll bring my mates back. used to buy jeggings from Primark. Okay, stop, guys, stop. I I've got something of Proddy that Proddy doesn't like. We will what? not be happy about. What? You've got something on me? Yeah. Oh, picture. I know oh, who no. this is from. Nah, gonna, I had to work to get this as well. He's such a little specky prick. Though. Nah. <laughs> I, I did this on the sly. I took a picture of his phone. Look at Proddy. Oh yeah, Proddy looks mental. You look like you're yeah. selling balloons on the strip. With the glasses? You look like you're from One Direction. Oh, you want to... Let me tell you somebody that looks like they're from the One Direction of the car world. Who's that? <laughs> you like that segment? Anyways, guys, we've got today's guest. It's none other than Matt Armstrong. Yes. Yes. Come on down. I always feel so bad for the guests when they have to endure the first five minutes of just, what is this? Yeah, yeah, just, just in the loft. There. Just chilling in <laughs> yeah. the loft. Oh, uh, no, just at uh, the ground floor. Yeah. Actually. Oh, oh, sorry. It's actually yeah. in our of mom's course. kitchen up there. Of course. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Go on, yeah. nice. Um, Why does your name only have one T in it? <laughs> So there was like a conspiracy about this. And I think oh, oh, I originally thought is because um, my granddad gave my first card to my mom or something along them like, or to me and spelled it one T. So then they put it on the birth certificate as one T. Yes. We recently found out that wasn't the case and they oh. just did it to be edgy. So uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just edgy, different. lightweight, loser T. Do your, do your parents smoke vapes as well? <laughs> uh, <what laughs> do potentially. Potentially. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, mate, absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, I would just, because we have a wide range of audience members, mm. uh, people that listen to this, and I always say it's best if you can just quickly describe what exactly type of content that you make. So I buy crash damaged cars, mm-hmm. rebuild them on the internet, film the whole story. Uh, along the way, we'll film um, like road trips with them, and but basically res- restoring cars which have been in a really bad accident and uh, yeah, following the whole journey with it. And it's literally led from one thing to another thing. And now they've become crazy, crazy cars. Like Mate, the cars we're doing now. It's insane. I like when I remember when I first stumbled across your channel and I was literally there like, there are millions of people watch this man put together a completely <laughs> fucked car. Like, what is it? So I clicked on it. And then next thing I knew, I was like three videos deep. <laughs> and it's just, you just had it on and it just like keeps going, just auto plays. And next thing you know- That's easy to consume, isn't it? You just yeah. sat there and you're like, damn, like, how many cars can I watch? Get <laughs> a it's lot. addictive, yeah. it is yeah. addictive to watch. I mean, like there's there's guys on YouTube, like jet washing driveways. And uh, you, yeah. as soon as you yeah. start watching, oh, I love them you're ones. committed to it. Then ones where they got a really dirty rug. <laughs> yeah. All the one. rugs, the carpet. Damn, I'll be in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be dead look, so long. You're a psycho so long. if you only watch halfway through. Yeah, you gotta because watch halfway. You've got to finish it. Oh. It's the same type of thing. I think people want to see the car crash damage and they want to see the end result. So it's kind of it. It's a good formula. I think it yeah. works. And then for me as well, I love learning about um, the rebuilding side of things and challenging myself with each different car. So works perfectly for the audience and for me, mate. It's it's absolutely nuts. And did you actually start? making YouTube videos about rebuilding or did you kind of stumble across it and then because this is what happens to a lot of people they and then one Stop video bangs else, and yeah. you go let me try that again yeah it was and again it was and like then, that I, I made my YouTube channel for BMX in mm, I, used right. to, I used to ride BMX professionally I did uh did it when I was like 16 17 and then to get into BMX competitions you used to have to 
film your riding and send it off to the competition and competition goes yeah you're good enough or whatever then they'll give you the all clear and then also at the same time the videos used to get separate views from other people watching of course and right. then it sort of slowly started to go into people in the BMX video started talking so like you started addressing the camera I'm here at this skate park started doing that showing a bit more personality and kind of it it went that way and then yeah for some reason, I decided one day oh, I might film a walk round of my car. And then that started getting more views than my actual BMX riding. <laughs> and uh, I sort of thought, oh, well, maybe there's an audience there for cars. And then one thing led to another thing and it slowly began to kind of go Just into a car, a car channel. Yeah. When was that? When did when was the first car video? So I filmed, I think I filmed a walk around like one of Mercedes at a time and saying, oh, this is what I'm going to do to it. I was always into cars anyway, always mm. messing around with them. Most BMXs sort of venture into the car world anyway. And uh, it really started from my girlfriend crashed her Audi TT and I thought it, I saw it as like a kind of like a little bit of a money making like scheme I could get out of this because she could buy it back from the insurance for like 400 pounds and she'd already got a payout from the car and I thought I could fix that pretty easily bought it back for 400 pound and uh and I thought I might film it on YouTube I've shown the car I said well it's been in a crash it's been in a crash I'm going to rebuild it if anyone wants to watch it then they can do and you know like it, I cringe at the videos now because oh. I was so b-tech in front of the camera and I never used to <laughs> like show properly what I was doing. I just used to put a camera up and then it would be like, right now I'm going to put the wing on. Didn't actually film putting the wing on. And then like, <laughs> just it's on. on. Yeah. And yeah, then, and okay. then but there was getting thousands of views again, like 3000 yeah. views here. And then I was like, I kept going and thought, oh, it's, it, it, it's quite cool. People are helping me along the way as well. People are messaging me, helping me get parts for it. I thought, oh, it's quite a cool thing. I didn't realize you could actually earn money for it. I thought it was just like a, 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 like thing a side project. Like, I yeah. thought it was like a, it's like an online forum, but with videos that's it really yeah and wait so did, did you actually know much about cars back then Ju just self-learning really just self -learning. like same with bmx so i used to self-teach myself to put the bmx together my dad was a mechanic so um he had like his own business uh working on cars and it was always like i used to ring him for help every yeah. now and then if like i was stuck on something but i always used to be reluctant to he, he used to know he used to be like every time you ring me, it's only for help. So it's like, yeah. I, I want to learn it myself and I used to enjoy doing it myself. Um, so yeah, it was just basically self-learning, looking on YouTube, how to do it. It's still like that now, to be fair. So yeah. what, would you have like a little YouTube video open on the laptop to the side as you're just working on the car? Yeah, so the, that kind of the day before, the day before I do a job, if I'm like, right, okay, t tomorrow I'm on the suspension, I'll just Google like Audi TT suspension, how to change <laughs> it, but watch it and think, okay, okay. that's how to do it. Remember Mental. it in my brain and then go and then just start doing it. And then, I'd film it in a way where I think, oh, if I've watched the video before uh, doing it and I struggled to understand what he was saying at this point, then I'd try and make other people understand. Nice. So so someone like who, who like me doesn't know what they're doing could understand exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's sort of one thing led to another thing and it took off really. Mate, yeah. that's absolutely, it, it's such a cool thing that, you, you know, I know that the BMX and sort of like the car community are pretty intertwined anyways, but it's the fact that you sort of randomly stumbled across it because a girlfriend crashed a TT. Yeah. So thank God she, she crashed it <laughs> because <laughs> we, we might not be sitting here if it wasn't exactly, for that. You know? Exactly. Um, and then I guess from there, you just sort of, you did that. Then went and did another one and it just sort of snowballed. Yeah, it was just sort of a, I, I really enjoyed making videos. I did like media at uh, sixth form and stuff like that. So kind of had the a basic. Classic, man. Media was classic. Yeah, that was it. It was like, it was such a dos. But then you learn, you learn the basics of like storytelling. It actually helps out. Yeah, yeah. It turns out like there was a lot of car YouTube channels on there, but I think what a lot of them lacked is like the storytelling kind of thing. It was more like, okay, this is how you repair it. And you'd only watch the video if you were interested in cars. And I think the way we're trying to go is more of the, the storytelling. And we're finding people who are not necessarily into cars as much now uh, are still watching the videos because they enjoy the story about it. And then they're learning little bits off it as well. So yeah. the, that media side of things, like getting the equilibrium and then the problem and then the new equilibrium at the end yeah. has really like helped the whole YouTube channel thing. It's weird how it all kind of 
comes together but yeah but even yeah even in in like a rebuilding because this is what we always talk about and we actually had um i guess max fosh on and we were talking about the formula for youtube videos now yeah which is they're like you know you gotta have you know uh the beginning of the video then you have a problem yeah you kind of solve it something goes wrong and it's like this this formula and it can literally be applied to any genre exactly and even rebuilding cars exactly yeah We, we found through anything even if you look on like Jeremy Clarkson's farm, like if you, he's been working on Top Gear, Top Gear and the Grand Tour stuff works really good. He's then gone across to doing farm stuff and it still works amazingly because it, it's the same concept. They have like a a problem and then they're trying to find a solution to that problem where they get more problems in, in between that and then yeah. they find a solution to it and it's in the middle. It's all entertaining. There's comedy involved and then they solve the problem. You have a payoff. There's good moments, there's bad moments and it applies everywhere. Mm. And if you can make the audience feel the same way you were feeling at that time, I think it's a good video. So yeah, it works the same way. Yeah, just to to clear, well, uh, oh, there it is. Oh, nice. Let me grab that. Scran here. Sorry about that. Oh my gosh. Nice and warm as well. Just what you want. This is the life, man. <laughs> Working, eating food, making good memories. You oh. know? So massive thank you to Tortilla for today's sponsor. If you don't already know, Tortilla are serving up fresh Californian burritos all over the UK, but that's not all. They've got a range of delicious scran from burrito bowls, tacos, quesadillas, and even some nachos. My go-to is the house burrito because it's got all the good stuff, the chicken, sour cream, pico de gallo. Burritos are also fully customizable for those of you who like it hot, you can get it hot. All right, let's unpack this thing. Chip, you unpack that one. I'm gonna unpack this one. What we got in here? The burritos. Ooh. I'm not Ooh. gonna lie. Every time I order from I got, Tortilla, I get the burrito. Got some nachos, baby. You know how I be. Oh, the guac. <laughs> oh my God, hold I had on. to let that guac off my fingers, you know? That's disgusting. Where have those fingers been? And let's not go there. You know what? I think this is our first ever mukbang, you know? You know what? mukbang, think... first mukbang with Pookie and my favorite food. <laughs> I am living. Look, I'll be honest with you, Chip. The only reason yeah. why I got this was that so I could get more stamps on my tortilla app. Okay. All right? There, there, there was a method behind the madness. <gasps> go on. Let's see. Get it all out. Get it all out. Don't be shy. Oh, the brownies. Brownies. All right. Oh, baby. Oh, this is a feast. Don't forget, don't forget the sauces, bro. Uh, Are we gonna do this yeah. mukbang or what? Oh yeah, I see your eyes, Stanley, lighting up. Yeah, of course, Stanley's a lighting up. Oh, boys, Tortilla have been cooking in more ways than one because they just launched a new app. Now this isn't like any old app, okay? I'm being serious. This is the app, right? What you wanna do is you join the Burrito Society today day, right? What happens is you'll unlock an entire gateway to new flavors mm. and rewards. I like that. And with each order, you'll collect a stamp. And with the more stamps you have, the more rewards you get. Let's go, bro. Let's go. You keep, no, you keep waffling. <laughs> I'm getting busy. He's an animal. This is what I'm saying. I'm not messing around, all right? I've been collecting my stamps and that's why I got this. I told you I'm getting this for the, for the stamps. I already have four, right? And that means I have earned myself free guac toppings. Yeah? Mm. Two stamps. But you know what I'm looking for, Chip? You're looking for this. How did he know? <laughs> How did this guy know? <laughs> That's right, boys. I've already earned myself five stamps, which means I'm ready to claim myself a free main. And unfortunately for Cal over here, he's slacking as he only has four stamps. This is ridiculous. Look, if you want to turn this into a challenge, it's game on, bro. Your five stamps will be nothing compared to what I'm going to rack up. Uh, honestly, believe uh, I will beat you. In fact, I'll, yeah. be I'll beat all of you. You'll catch me next week with a burrito, free burrito in my hand, of course. And uh, in fact, I challenge everyone. I challenge everyone watching Everyone not, in this room. It's not happening. Uh, no, no people, it's not happening. It's not possible to get more It's not happening. Away. I'm literally one away, no. one stamp away from my free main. Yeah. yeah? But, yeah you're and gonna... then we're on level terms. No. So I don't know why you're giving it the big ones. All right, I'll tell you what. You should check out 
refer a friend because you actually get a free stamp for that as well. And, and to be fair, you will need as all the stamps you can get if you are going to catch up to me. But yeah, refer a friend. Hmm. You need everything you can get. Nah, I bet. Nah. Here, how about this? I bet you don't even have your loyalty card in the wallet app. Okay. Oh my God. What are you, how are you always one step ahead of me right now? Hmm. Mm. Right, let's get back to it. Enough of that, but I'll just say this once and for all. Yep. You're all getting smoked. I'm going to end up with the most stamps. Say no more. So if you all want to join the Burrito Society, make sure you download the Tortilla app. Start collecting stamps and rewards today. Download the Tortilla app right now via the link on screen or use the link in the description box and make sure you use our code fellas10 for 10% off. We've sorted you out once again. And you thought that was it? Well, if you sign up to the Burrito Society between today and the 15th of August, well, good news guys, because that means you're getting free chips and salsa. Once again, we're sorting you out. Let's get this away so we can return back to our chat with our good friend, Matt, because otherwise... All right, Stanley, would you mind... Can we just cut... To, can we cut this bit out, please? I feel uh, feel this might be rude to do in front of the guest. Damn. And what was, like, the, the moment or, like, the specific video where you was like, you know what, now this is kind of taking off now. This is, like, my thing. I, I should go fully in. I think... The moment, so I, I think I started off when with the Audi TT build, then my channel got monetized and I was like, oh, okay, I think I was earning like 40 or 50 pounds. Here month. comes the money. Yeah, I was yeah, like, oh, bet. wow, we're actually earning 40, 50 pounds is paying for my gym membership. I thought, this is amazing. Like, I was going to work nine to five still, filming the videos on the weekend in my spare time. And then I think it was, it sort of started picking up and then I had sponsors message me and I was charging them like, 50 quid to say six. I was getting 100,000 views and I was charging them 50 pounds. Sounds like Whoa. Prodi. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing, and like, I just, I didn't have any friends who were doing it. Yeah, I was so thinking, yeah, know. 50 quid. Yeah. So it's meant I'm earning like extra 100, 200 quid a month. It's paying like gym, it started paying gym membership. Then it was like, it nearly paying my mortgage. And then I think it got down to, it It was lockdown. Um, and everyone at my work, a lot of people at my work, the young ones got furloughed and we got taken away, furloughed. We sat at home five weeks at home. And uh, where were you working? Sorry, I was working at a place called Graham Goose, and it was like a Ford performance place. But it was nothing to do with cars. I was oh. building the websites and right. listing stuff on Amazon, mm. eBay, um, and doing all that type of stuff, which again helps in the world I'm in at the minute. And uh, I enjoyed it because it's still car related, but on the computer as well. Could be a little creative with it. But we got furloughed. And at that time, I was just saving money to put deposit to buy a house. And that was sort of my get out of nine to five clause. I was going to use these deposits to buy a house, rent them out, and then kind of keep going that way. And uh, I'd already got one at this point when I was working full time and I saved up another deposit to go again. And during that time when we got furloughed, it was like the house market was like up, down, left, right. And I was like, I don't want to spend this money on a house right now because we don't know whether the market's going to go up, down or whatever. And at the time I started, I was earning about 100, 200 pound a month off YouTube. And I thought, you know what? I might just, with this deposit, risk it and buy like a, another crash damaged car. And we seen this Bentley Continental come up at auction and I won it for ten thousand pounds. I just went for it, and that was my house deposit gone. Man, oh, that's oh a risky one. Yeah. That oh, a great Christ. fucking risk. Uh, yeah, but at the I, time we was. Been, I was absolutely putting myself. I was thinking, I'm gonna. I'll go for it. I went for it. So house deposit's gone on the car. We got it, and I was no like, way right. the girlfriend was chuffed with that. Do, do you know what? I think she was actually excited for it. Okay. She was really excited for it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, we sort of, you know, like you explain it in a way where it could work, and it. it 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 paid off really. We got it. We got the car, and it was, I didn't have anywhere to rebuild it. I was just doing it on my driveway at this point. But because it was locked down, there was nothing else to do. Just sitting there on my driveway, and then at the same time as well, there was nothing else to do for all these other car people around the world. So they're just watching YouTube. All the views went up. Like everyone yeah. was watching me rebuild this Bentley on the driveway. We had the newspapers. They started like getting involved with it. Bentley themselves started calling me up and saying like, oh, we want to check over the car and help you out and everything like that. And it just wow. started lifting up, lifting up. And next thing I had an agency message me and say, oh, we've got a, a sponsor agreement we want to give to you. Two videos a month for this sponsor. And how much do you want? I'm thinking, oh, do you know what? I might push it this time. I'll say a hundred pound a video. No. So, 
It's like, take me back. You got from 50, I thought you were going to say. No, no, no. You got a hundred quid. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. I'm still getting paid from work, bearing in mind, I'm furloughed. So extra hundred pound, extra I'm thinking, yes, I'm gassed on this. And uh, the agency come back saying, you should be charging like 2,000 pound a video. I'm like, what? And then that, that's when my whole like mind just changed. I'm like, I cannot believe you can earn that much money through a video and, and saying something for 60 seconds in a mm. video. It clearly works because companies keep back and they keep coming back to spend the money. So it clearly works. It's not like a rip off. And I mean, you see advertising everywhere. Yeah. yeah it, but I could not believe that's how, and that's how much I'll be earning a month at work. So I was like, for one video, of course, I'm going to say yes. So I was like, yeah, go for it. I got this brand deal. Five, so I still had the five weeks of rebuilding this Bentley. We, I got it all back on the road. It was like a really good story. And then we wanted, the plan was to rebuild it and drive it to Monaco once the lockdown had ended. Lockdown ended five weeks later, I got called back into work. I'm like, okay, it's, it's, I was earning really good money then from my YouTube channel. Well, good money compared to what I was on. And I was thinking, oh, I should have quit my job. But at the time when people are getting like laid off from their jobs and things like that, I was like, it's probably not a good idea. Went back into work and I was thinking I was in work about a week and I could not concentrate. I was replying to comments, replying back to email. <laughs> I was like, it's oh, not fair on my boss. Lovely, yeah, it's like, it's not fair on my boss to me to sit here and my mind be on making YouTube videos and not on working for the mm. company. So yeah. immediately left my job and then went at it full throttle. And I thought, worst comes to worst, I'll go back and get a, another job somewhere else. So quit there and then that was it then you you balls deep in it and there's no there's no going back we had, had to make it work had mortgage to pay i had like all the stress the now the, yeah that was it but it was the best thing i did like yeah best thing i did and yeah i was trying to say that in my videos like there's a lot of people out there that work their nine to five job and absolutely hate it but they don't realize there is so many other ways to Just make take a living risk, man. yeah yeah you that's did. it that's it yeah no i'm so glad i've done it yeah. but yeah it's crazy did you um did you go to monaco did you drive it yeah so the it was a weird it was in between the lockdowns and we we managed to drive it to monaco Monaco, this Bentley, we just rebuilt. We got all the way there. It was, a, again, a really good story and a great video. First like, road trip video I filmed. Really enjoyed doing it. Got it to Monaco. It got parked outside the Monte Carlo Casino. And uh, oh, it was, a, it was literally sick. like, it, it's like you've changed from working a nine to five job to then doing something you completely love doing and getting paid to go on holiday. Crazy. Come back. And then, then they started this postcode lockdown thing where everyone's locked back in your house again. But again, it helped because people were just stuck at home. They're watching people rebuild cars like myself on the driveway and I was really enjoying it. Damn, look, there's the video there. What yeah, was the yeah, million that's million? me. Oh, why do they like Ali G here, man? <laughs> what is going on? So we had that's a time crazy, wearing on. an Ali G costume because we had like, I had a, a hatchback. Right. Um, oh, there's the two, there's a the hundred pound ad. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's my there's my hundred pound ad. There's the car getting parked outside the Monte, uh, the Monte Carlo Casino. So you bought this for ten grand. Can, 10, I, can, I, can I quickly see how it looked before? Yeah. So at how the many start, how many videos did you get out of this Bentley rebuild? I think. 14 oh you milked it is it, is it one, is one a week or was it one a week yeah. yeah i was doing one a week and it's crazy how much it's changed now oh like God, so that yeah that was it <laughs> it's me a football player yeah. i don't know what i was doing honestly i was off my mind but yeah <laughs> it's just complete out of context when you need the, when you need to get the watch time up you know? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I, I, don't I got know a question actually about. i tell you at the time obviously you're building this on just your driveway outside your house yeah kind of on YouTube. Did you ever have people coming over and recognizing did that ever become At a that problem? At time, not too much. I mean, the neighbors were kind of like window twitching a bit but not too much at that time but yep. eventually it did start getting that way like yeah. uh you know like kids leaving school and then they started recognizing it and things like that. It 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 slowly slowly built up but even still now it's a bit strange for me that kind of aspect to it like fans seeing stuff because I don't we kind of live in the middle of nowhere mm. I wake up in the morning I drive to the unit I'm the doors are locked in the unit I'm working on the cars and I drive home so you know like going out in public it's like and then people are like oh can I have a photo can I have a photo it's it's still strange for me that kind of aspect to it you don't think you 
anything's changed but then when you're going out and then you're in the public toilets and someone's tapping you on the shoulder saying okay oh, grab a phone <laughs> why are you like, taking a phone you're not <laughs> that, yeah. that old chestnut <laughs> yeah that's it so but. the 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 Bentley you buy it for 10 grand how yeah. much w w did you spend rebuilding it we got it. I think we did a video of breaking down the cost, but I think it was just under twenty thousand pounds in total, altogether. including the ten grand. Yeah, in to, in including the ten grand to buy it. It, it wasn't a. It wasn't too bad, and we got to like modify it with that and everything as well. And yeah, it wasn't too bad, and it was like really like help me understand a load of different aspects to like rebuilding stuff and it builds your confidence up again if you do something like a Bentley then you you think oh my god this is an expensive car everything's going to be way harder but it's exactly the same it's nuts and bolts and you yeah. find things off on Bentleys you find on Volkswagen Polo so then you your confidence boost for your next build you think okay let's do something worse and then it gradually got worse and worse and worse and also the videos you end up doing a lot more in each video so like looking back on these older videos we used to do like changing the brakes in one video and now we're like almost rebuilding an entire car in a video yeah. and people are saying like, oh we need more videos a week we need more used to upload once a week like no problem and it's like now the videos are twice as long we're doing twice as much work it's it's insane how it's gone but it, it's it's our own fault for trying to improve the videos every each time. and every single yeah. time. Yeah. You got to evolve, ain't you? Would you, exactly. would, would, so um, you, you spend 20 grand on the car. Like it, it's quite a good business business model in that sense that, like, you know, you've bought an asset, you've improved it and it increased its value. Similar to if you were to buy a home, do it up. Yeah. And that way, what do you do once you've redone it? So with that car, um, one of my friends set up a competition company. And yeah. um, again, this was all during lockdown as well. He set up this co company and I thought, you know what? Let's, it was another risk that we kind of like jumped in two footed and said, I've got 20 grand to make back out of this car now. And selling a crash damaged Bentley is quite hard. Uh, is Even though I have filmed everything that's been done to the car, it's, it's going to be, it's only going to be a particular person who wants a Bentley, which has been crash damaged damage, and yeah. repaired by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. So, <laughs> the, 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 it's, it's a very niche market. Yeah, to sell to. Exactly. So for me, and also for me to carry on do, filming the videos, I, I need some money then to, come back into my account so I can go and buy another project. So we decided let's try and raffle it off to the people that watched it. I needed to recuperate 20 grand. And so with that in mind, we said, right, there's this many raffle tickets um, for sale. I think it was like 30,000 pounds worth of tickets for sale, which covers costs and everything like that. It was 10 pound a ticket, I think at the time. And we did it through his competition company and we released it. And I think the ticket sold out within like half an hour. Oh, oh like they were just my, all that's gone. 300 grand. That's just brilliant. yeah, just and like that. that is, it was, uh, it was no, not 300 grand. It was oh, 30, 30 30, grand. Sorry, 30 grand. Yeah, I wish it, if it was 300 grand, yeah, the next car would have been crazy. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but no, it was 30 grand, got my money back straight away. And then also we then got to film this young lad, uh, Jack, who won the Bentley? It was like down south. He um, Must have been for ten quid. For ten quid, get ten the quid. He got this car, and we got to film dropping it down to him, and he was absolutely <laughs> buzzing with it. Like it was. That's another video in itself, and it was it was amazing. Like here. dropping that was it. Yeah. So we got um, we filmed like the journey of the last drive with the car, dropping it down to. Uh, Dropping it down to Jack. He's and how old? How old is this kid. lad? Is he a young lad as well? He was like twenty one and was oh, expecting wait. him to sell it. Wait. And then it was like, oh, we, um, so what are you going to do with it? You're going to sell it or anything like that? He goes, I've already insured it. I've already taxed it. I'm going to drive it to work every day. He kept it for over a year. And oh, then, uh, fair enough. Yeah, man. he kept it for over. A year. Yeah, this was his. This twenty one pulling up at his house, yeah. whipping round in a bed. His insurance that's must have been a. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think he told us what his insurance was. It was insane. This was it. The young lad here. Um, on yeah, line, dropping it. Yeah. It Drop looks it like you're doing one of them secret undercover yeah, films. Yeah. The way it's going in. Around. Honestly, the way it's changed is mad. <laughs> so, so these become road legal as soon as you do the repairs on yeah, them? Yeah, so a lot of them, a lot of the cars will see be repaired. All they'll need is an MOT test yeah. and then they'll be legal for the road. But the good thing with the Bentley is that Bentley themselves contacted us and they wanted to check over the car. And I think that which really helped in the whole build process is like, it's gone to the Bentley techs. They've checked over the full car and it really helped as well because then it's not only me showing the good parts or the bad parts then people can see okay the Bentley text would pick out oh he's not done this thing quite right or this thing needs changing and then it it kind of 
help me as well, help the viewers understand, okay, this is what you could have done if I had a lift in my garden or something like that. Right. But yeah, it worked, it worked really, really well. But um, yeah, it, again, it's just, class. we've gone on to do that with most of the builds and it's changed a lot of people's lives. They've had these, the cars have obviously got more and more expensive each time. People are winning them for like 10 quid and then they're keeping them for a bit. Some are selling them and then buying a house. Like Some are like selling them and doing extensions to the house or and it, it, people are, going crazy with it that's awesome like, yeah it's, that's nice it's, man it's really good well, it, you've inspired a lot of people to get into like their first rebuild as well yeah like yeah, people they it. might go out buy a little 500 quid car it's done yeah. mashed up and then go you know what I'm going to give it a go yeah that's it I think that's sometimes a problem as well is people see it on YouTube and think it's really easy and then they yeah. get to yeah. like oh you know what <laughs> yeah Fuck. it's hard yeah. Where, would you, where would you even start you're looking at it you're like yeah <laughs> I'm not going to lie like even just looking no, at no it no idea and I don't no clue it looks like so difficult. Mm. Like, it, and, it, it, and it probably cars. is a little bit easier than the way I have it in my head because it genuinely is mental. But I can imagine it just being really frustrating. Like, for example, if I buy a Lego set, right, right and I get <laughs> right, right. And, and I get to a certain point, and it's just not quite not fitting. the same though, right? Let's I have see. an issue. Is I look at it, I go this is a bag of shit no, <laughs> like, and, I, got, and I leave it. Whereas people like you, they probably look at it like, okay, so how can I fix this? <laughs> I abandon shit. You know, like if you get the car, right? I'm sure it's, you ain't just going online and Googling that, like, you know, my star X seven instructions. Like, it's not, <laughs> yes, that, yes, not, that, that exactly can't be, that, is, that can't be happening. That, well, it's getting not, to the point, it's getting not, to the point where there's no instructions. At the minute we're doing the Rolls Royce and there's like barely anyone that's built rebuilt one online. There's no, there's yeah. nothing online about there's not, them. There's not going to be geezers rebuilding Mansory Yeah, so you have races. to figure it out yourself a lot of the time. And uh, yeah, it does get, it does get frustrating. But again, I really enjoy like solving the problem of, of mm. getting around. It's always, we, there's always a way around it. You can solve it. But yeah, there's sometimes it does get frustrating. Mm. It, it is. You know, with, um, so oh, let's say you're you're on a build and you've got you need to buy loads of different parts, all this kind of stuff. Like surely sometimes you could be sat waiting for a, for a while. Yeah, of, that like, getting parts from around the world. We figured that out quite sort of fairly early on, where it was like people were dying for the next video, and it's like we found if you don't upload the next video, then we're not going to get paid. So we like we need to figure out a way how we can consistently upload. So then it become instead of having one car on the channel, we'd then have two cars. So we'd do two different builds at two different times. So we'd say we'd have the Rolls Royce, we'll get as far as we can. We need to order parts. We'll order the parts for that. But in the meantime, whilst we're waiting, we jump on another car and then you get that far, then you need to order parts for that. But by the time you've finished working on that one and you order parts, the parts for the other one would have arrived. Yeah. So you can bounce between the two. So yeah, that's how it didn't work. It, it doesn't work as well as, as filming it one video after the other, after the other, but because we're filming it real time, there's no way of like of doing it consistently without having that sort of backup of the other yeah. car. Mm. And you mentioned there about the the Mansory Rolls Royce, and that is or Rashford's Rolls Royce <laughs> yeah. as, it, as it's been uh, been titled. Tell us a little bit about how this even starts. How do you end up? Because I remember seeing in the papers, I'm sure yeah. you do as well, when Rashford crashed this car, because yeah. it was literally everywhere. It was there like, yeah. Rashford crashes 700,000 pound car. Exactly, yeah. And so just tell, t take us through the story of it. It was so weird, actually. I don't, actually, I don't know if I've, I've said, I don't think I've explained this, actually, but the um, the car, actually, I, I saw the crash the in the newspapers, just completely, my mind just went over it for some reason. I didn't even think anything from it because normally these really expensive cars they'll just get repaired by the manufacturer because they're so rare they're so expensive and normally they either just get crushed because they don't want something like that being put back on the road or the manufacturer will put it back together because they don't want somebody else to put it back together and then it looks bad say if a if a rolls royce a man sorry rolls royce is driving down the road and there's massive panel gaps and things are dropping off it it looks bad for rolls royce and man so they're really yeah. protective of both brands so normally they disappear and you never see anything from it then hannah my girlfriend got an email from a like a body shop i think it was saying I've got a client here who wants to dispose of a Rolls Royce. Are you interested? And we had all these photos. I did not even know it was Rashford's at this point. And we looked at it and thought, yeah, that would be amazing. Like, let's let's get it. So then we emailed back saying, yeah, really interested. What price are you thinking of? And then it just dis ghosted for about six months, I think it was. Ooh, Didn't man. hear anything. And then we had an email back saying the client's decided to put it through an auction and this is the link to the auction. So 
um, we clicked on the auction site and we seen all the photos of it and think, right, this looks quite a good and interesting rebuild. Let's go for it. So I'm sat there at home and then I'm looking at like Mansory parts. I was like, there can't be many of these on the road. And I'm looking and as I'm Googling it, loads of these Rashford crashes kept keep coming up. And I'm like, let's have a look at that. I clicked on that and I'm like, oh, it's the same car. I was like, oh, it's, I didn't realise it was You must car. have been buzzed. Yeah, I, was like, no, you're like what? I did not realise it. I was like, what the hell? So then I was like, okay, We've got to get it now. We've yeah, got it. it it's to. got a backstory. And then we also found that there was a backstory with the whole insurance issue as well. So they didn't categorize the car because of the uh, how high value it was. The insurance paid obviously paid out around £700,000 to Rashford. And that's a massive loss for an insurance company. So they kind of did a little loophole because categorizing a car is it's not, they don't have to categorize it by law. They, they just do it to keep, bad cars off the road and everything like that. So the insurance didn't categorize the car. So if I, when I rebuild this car, it will literally come up as a clean wow. car, no problem. So, but they only done that so they can get the maximum amount of money from it at auction. So right. it's gone at auction and then that's it. And then we're, we're bidding in it. And at the time I was, we were buying a new house. And I was thinking, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford this. But yeah. it went for a lot. It went for £180,000. We were thinking it's going to go for like 300000 but yeah. £180,000, which actually wasn't too bad. Um, for it sounds the crazy, value but for car. a £700,000 yeah, car, it's going to be quite rare anyway. Exactly, exactly. Again, it's going to be one of them things, which is like, it was a huge risk as well, because who the hell who's got, who's got that type of money yeah. is going to want to buy... A, a smash a one which has been smashed up and rebuilt by myself that's the that's the strange thing but we've had a lot of offers from it wow and, you know, from like dubai people who want to get shipped over there people from india like correct because they these people they just want it na like they want it now when when with mansori stuff you buy the mansori kit then you have to wait for a long time for the car to be done whereas a lot of people who want like we're talking roles in, like years yeah so yeah, yeah sometimes it can be that long i mean uh we found out that marcus when he crashed his um he bought another one as soon as he got his insurance payout again he he bought another one immediately same spec but in white but he's only just recently got it so that crash was over wow. a year ago wow. and he's only just got his new one yeah. and then He's just got banned from driving for six months, which is... <laughs> I've it. just seen this, by the way. Have you seen that? It's yeah, not I've good. It. Do you know... It, it, Check it. What, what was he... How was bad he, is this driving? I love I don't, him. Do you know what? I, love I him feel up. so bad. I feel like I'm... I don't want to, like, put Dog bad on, on his yeah. name because it gets a lot of stick. But, yeah, he does. Like, he's a, he's a good player, but... Like, all What's these, he doing these driving? These tabloids <laughs> are not helping him. He's, Marcus Rashford has been given a six-month driving ban for speeding in his brand new <laughs> Rolls Royce. I know, yeah, I know. 104 miles per hour on the M6. He, what is he th doing? We, we need to get this man an Uber. Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, get an Uber. I, I think you need to get him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you need to get him on that. the podcast. And then and I, I think it would be amazing for him to come on either my channel or podcast yeah. or something like that and just... Just explain all of it. Like, you know, <laughs> these tablets can make it look so bad. They can yeah. make, but there's probably a perfect explanation. We really wanted to get him on the channel, but he's quite heavily protected by a team, yeah, as you United, imagine. If of someone that high status, they didn't. We actually raffled one of the um, front wings off the Rolls Royce. We signed it, and we we're raising money for the charity that is linked with that fair share. And we raffled it off, and all the money we made from it, we donated to that. But we really wanted him to sign it, but. His team was like, oh, we don't really want to get involved with because it's quite, it's like bad. He has press. crashed it. Yeah, hasn't it's, like, bad, it's, it's bad, not a good look. Yeah. For really, him, they yeah. want to avoid it as much as possible. But at this point, there's no avoiding it. I, I feel like it should just just come out, have a laugh. Look, miss, I've crashed my car before. I've, I've crashed my car. I got the stick for it. Oh, you're a terrible driver. Whatever. Like, let's just, it just, yeah. it, I think it comes it across better. Have a laugh about it. It's done. Whatever. But it would be amazing if we could come on the channel or. Again, like I think a podcast. He should. I, I actually think, you know, we're speaking about it being like potentially bad PR. I think there's such an easy way mm. to spin this. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. you've offered him like the charity route. Let's be honest, Rashford <laughs> loves a charity route. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Has he watched the series, you reckon? Definitely, yeah, bro. Surely. If that surely. was my car, I'm his watching every, every, minute, <laughs> every second. So his um, team reached out to me after the first video because we couldn't get the car started and we eventually got it started. Don't know how, but his team reached out who look after a lot of his cars and said the car's got a ghost on it where you have to put like a special code in to, to start it up. Oh yeah. They also it's a security said, feature, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that car, it, I don't blame him. 
time. But then the same thing, they've, they've messaged, messaged me and gone, oh, we've got the spare key. We've got the service history. We've got a few oh, spare best. parts. And I was like, oh, wicked. And they said, come up and grab them off us. And when we went up there, the lads are, you know, like the proper Manchester, like Northern, proper sound lads, like down to earth lads. And then it kind of opened my eyes up a bit about like Marcus of like, he is just a normal Manchester like lad, lad from like an estate plays football it just earns money like he earns good money it's just and like all these are all down to earth and they're saying like yeah the lads have watched the uh the videos at the club and they're all having a laugh about it and that and like taking the piss out of him for yeah. like crashing and stuff like that but yeah they're trying to stay away from it as much as possible they're obviously fair, but yeah. it, the, so they gave what, you like the secret key to to start it up yeah they gave yeah. me the code they gave me a spare key they gave oh, me a load class. of parts they helped me with, with loads of other things as well they get they, they didn't have to help and they were really really sound so like big shout out to them for actually helping and stuff and they've been really good but yeah the last thing i want to do is put bad press on him but at yeah. the same time i've never said a bad word about him but it kind of writes it for itself like yeah. everyone's like, oh he's a terrible driver what's he's doing but it's the, true this is, it's not even about it's just funny so like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. sorry but <laughs> this is just hilarious like I mean, you get he's your brand not new doing anything bad with his band there like in terms of driving skill he's just speeding he's just too speed. fast all he's and, doing is so, gone too fast and to be fair I think in the the his statement on that speeding was that he thought someone was following him yeah whether oh, that's yes, true or not yeah, I don't know did say but that. I can imagine you could certainly <laughs> yes, imagine him. somebody like that and you'd be a bit shook yeah. if somebody's following you well, I'd be gone and yeah. also that in these Rolls Royces you can do 30 mile out it feels like you're crawling like you know they're yeah. so, so smooth they feel like you're on, on air like is the, so you could be going 100 mile out it feel like 10 like it, it, there's it's really deceiving how fast you're going but his team said as well they said oh it's quite upset because the crash wasn't actually his fault it was uh, this old lady's fault they explained the crash in the next video we explained what had happened yeah. apparently this old lady had like pulled into his lane and that's what had sent him into a spin and the crash should be explained that in the in the video but the speeding I mean that's yeah, all in your right foot isn't it yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, what, it's what, heavy right you can't, you can't defend you here we have seen videos of players leaving the training ground and these fans are crazy like going up to the yeah. the screen like banging on the screen and, and like a lot of the players are going through like red lights to get away and things like that and yeah I think um, on his statement it did say that he thought this BMW was chasing him yeah. and the BMW was an undercover cop car. So whether they just like... <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's a stitch up, man. I know, I know. That's a fucking... They it were out to get him. It's they, a violation. Like, <laughs> someone's definitely belled the cop is like, by the way, his new rolls has just arrived. <laughs> yeah. You can get him easy on this one. <laughs> it's bad. It is Safe bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, um, it is what it is. You can't, you can't get away from it. So, so you get the car for 180 grand. Yeah. Um, and how long have you, have you spent rebuilding it? Because like you said, rebuilding something like a Mansory yeah. uh, the job, it's just the parts are so rare. Yeah. They're so expensive. What talk us through like so, since then? Again, Rolls Royce have actually been quite helpful, but normally with cars this expensive and like Rolls Royce, they're really protective of the brand. So they mm. can refuse to sell you parts for the for that VIN number of the car because again they don't want someone like me rebuilding a prestigious car like a Rolls Royce and then it goes out and drops to bits. It looks bad on the brand, but they've been really helpful. Um, wow. They've been helpful with getting us parts and everything like that. Again, we've not had any special deals. It's been extortionate prices, but when we added up all the value of all the stuff that we needed, it was adding up to silly amounts of stuff. And then like you find one thing broken, then another thing broken. And we then found out that to buy a older model Rolls Royce which is pretty much exactly the same they just facelifted like the headlights they changed the bumper or little bits here and there but mainly all the chassis and the suspension was exactly the same older model Rolls Royce around £90,000 and we thought is it worth buying an older model Rolls Royce for £90,000 to rebuild a car which is potentially worth £700,000 it's only done a thousand miles on the clock and then at the end at the end of with this parts car, where we've taken all the parts off it, we can we've still got a car worth a fair bit of money here, which we can sell the parts off. So even if we get thirty grand back off the parts car, then we've only spent yeah sixty thousand pounds repairing it. So in the end, we committed to buying a parts car <sighs> to strip apart, and it was probably the best thing we've done. We it's been so easy to actually repair the Rolls Royce now from using that parts car but knowing where everything is taking the stuff off it and that type of stuff and uh, it's been it's worked really well Like it, but it's got to the point where we've had to cut off the whole back end of this car now to fit to 
Rashford's old one and Jesus. yeah it's a, it's a big job but we're sort of at the last hurdle now at the painting and stuff and yeah we've then got to take it to Mansori in Germany to the last final things there's a there's a coach line which runs along the side of the car yeah. and it's like hand painted on and it's airbrushed on. I, I heard a rumor and I don't know if it, this won't be from Mansory, this will be for actual Rolls Royce, but there's only like one guy in the world that can do this coach line. Is that true? I think it's a myth. That right. I think it's a myth. Like we've been That'd told be it's a myth. So. Like it's a good story. It but is. I think it's like one guy doing that is crazy. But like, chatting I, around the world, just <laughs> yeah, you go, I, man. I can't, you go. Yeah, I can't there's no see way. Right? It. I think it's a myth, but like there is a lot of people that can do it, but there might just be one guy who's the best at it. But Mansoury have offered to say like, okay, to do that coach line, bring it to us in Germany. We'll do the coach line. We'll airbrush the Mansoury logos into the paint. And then we also do a tour of the factory, check over the car. Because again, they want it looking good as well because it's in their best interest. This car's mm. going to be going all over the place. Photos are going to be taken of it. And if it looks bad, it looks bad on them as well. So it yeah. works It works hand in hand. It worked in our favour actually. So yeah, yeah it's, it's good actually. I'm looking forward to seeing it done. Yeah. yeah. The auction of this is the thing that's interested me the most because I've never like taken part in an auction for something so expensive like an eBay auction yeah you just sat there putting in your bid is it <laughs> yeah, the, is, quid, is, it, is it the quid. same thing but you sat there and you got 180 grand yeah waiting for the counter Come on. so I had it was on 150 for a, a long time and yeah. I was thinking I'm going to go up to 200 and that's it done I was on the phone to my dad at the time when it, it, the auction was on and uh, I said to him, oh, I'm, I'm bidding on this Rolls Royce. And he was like, oh yeah, what are you going to go up to? And I said, oh, well at the minute I'm winning and it was at 180 grand and it was, there was about 20 minutes left. I was like, oh, it's going to go way higher than this. And then nobody else was bidding. Nobody, like it was just sat there for ages and then the auction ended. I was like, I think I've just won it. Like, <laughs> did I was it like, also refresh or did you need to refresh the page? So it, no, it, it it refreshes automatically. And the worst yeah. thing about car auctions online is that every time someone bids, it adds another 30 seconds on. Okay. So, and you get drawn into it. You know, a lot <laughs> like of bidding cars. on a FIFA player. Yeah. yeah. Be <laughs> You'd be there and you'd be like, you're going way over budget. You're like, yeah. he's not even worth this, but, no, but then it'd be, like, yeah, I need yeah, to yeah. get this card. <laughs> That's it. You, you, you say, oh, my budget's this. And then someone bids over it and you go, oh, Another another ten quid, another twenty quid. And then yeah. It just keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. You think I've committed to buying this now, and then you it eventually just escalates. And I thought it was going to end up like that, but nobody else bid it. I think everyone else had like some <laughs> some common sense, but yeah, nobody <laughs> else bid it. And uh, yeah, then I won it. And picking it up was crazy. Like it got forklifted onto the back of. I saw trailer. that in the video. I was so confused as to how the car didn't break on a <laughs> tiny little forklift. I know, man. It's like a two and a half ton car yeah. that picks it up with a forklift and put it, loaded it down onto the trailer. I was, uh, my heart you was going. Worried, yeah. yeah, my heart was going. And when it got dumped outside our unit, there's no suspension on the back. Getting it in the <coughs> unit was another another problem, like trying to work out how to do that. But yeah, it's it's been, all been a great like you couldn't write it, you couldn't tell the story. How, but how mashed up was it, Paddy? Can you? Oh, it's bit. It was bad. bad. It's probably really the bad. worst one I've done. Oh, really? well. yeah. This thing, this thing was peppered. Is this it? Go, yeah. Well, yeah. Let me yeah. get onto the um the playlist one set. Oh, this it. is yeah. This is just trying to get it inside. Bloody hell! Look, it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> <laughs> this thing's busted. The back bro. wheel was like half a wheel. Yeah, there's nothing on the front. The suspension was all over the place. Oh, that and that's your dad too. there. Yeah, that's my dad. We're trying to get it started, so we couldn't figure out why the car wouldn't start. And we've never bought a car before, which has had a ghost on it. Yeah. And the best thing is that the auction place said it, it, it started and it was like, hmm, okay. So we called the auction place and said, you've had this car started because you've listed in the auction. It started, how did you do it? And they were just like, oh yeah, we just connected the battery connector and started. It was like, well, it's not doing it. We had like four jumper packs on it. We had one of my dad's cars on onto it, like trying to, get this thing going. We could not get it going. That's the fault lift. Mate, that, <laughs> that's right, crazy. That, that would stress me how? out. How? That's crazy, isn't it? My yeah, arse would have fallen out. I'd love to know how the driver was feeling. Like, <laughs> know, it's just got 700 grand car and two little metal <laughs> That's bits. great. The fact that Marcus has bought that car, like 700,000 pound brand new, and then and that is the end product of it. It's, it's like Portland. one of those memes where it's like, you're probably wondering how I ended up here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's crash it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is, that's mad. Some of the parts that you mentioned, like obviously being so expensive, and I remember when I was watching through the videos, it was like, 
these like little side fins and yeah. things and you were there like oh that costs like 20 grand or something it's ridiculous. what was that the most expensive part that sort of blew your mind the front bumper and there was a story behind the front bumper as well so the front bumper complete thirty thousand pounds this man sorry one you could buy <gasps> that's like a whole co- <laughs> that, that's a good <laughs> yeah. car you can buy a regular bumper for the wraith not a man sorry one and it's like six thousand pounds this man sorry one's thirty thousand pounds made out of carbon fiber especially made for the car but something's happened between the car being crashed and it getting passed around a lot of body shops so The car got crashed, it got sent to one body shop and then the insurance assessors come out and they assess the car. But apparently none of the insurance assessors wanted to write off the car because they didn't want to go back to tell the boss, this car's a write off, you've got to pay out £700,000. So apparently a lot of these insurance assessors were going down, looking at the car and going, I'll come back tomorrow. Or could you take the front bumper off for me? And then when I come back tomorrow, I can have a look at the structure and see if it's repairable. So a lot of parts got taken off. That's why it's not got a bumper on at the minute. So when we picked it up, it the bumper got taken off the car. Some other parts got taken off the car as it sat in these body shops. And when they've been taken off, the sat there. And then eventually the car's been paid out from the insurance and it's gone back to uh, Rashford's place. So the guys that look after Rashford's car without a bumper on. So the bumper is then sat at this other body shop place. They don't want it there. So they've sold it on eBay. And I saw the bumper on eBay what? for like, it, it was listed for about, two grand at the time and it was only had a very small amount of damage in it and uh it sold before the car sold at auction and it was actually somebody else who was apparently bidding on it and he won it for like 700 quid this the original <gasps> a 30 bumper. grand bumper yeah, for 30, 700 quid that was wow. it yeah it was like 30 grand bumper 700 quid. he's rubbing his hands it's gone here. when i figured out how much the bumper was worth i was like oh my god okay i need to find this bumper where is it gone because it's no good to anybody else yep. it's a mansory bumper. it is yeah. it's no good to anyone so it's a souvenir for someone exactly that's it. it popped up on facebook marketplace <laughs> for like, it, yeah, yeah it, it, that, it, always it, facebook man a man and sorry, front bumper popped up on Facebook Marketplace. Exactly. Dave in the comments, that looks class. Yeah, yeah, that's it. People were tagging me it's in it. It's still available, mate. That yeah. was it. Literally, it was, it was one of them. It was like, is it still available? He was like, yeah, it is. I made an offer on it. It won't come down. Obviously, he knew I needed it. £3,000 he was selling this bumper for. I was like, I'm just going to have to do it. It's a 30 grand yeah. bumper. It's got a bit of damage. And I went to collect it from Manchester and uh, spoke to the guy. And he was like, oh, yeah, I was buying it because um, I was bidding on the car and uh, I wanted it in case I won the car. I don't know how true that is. Yeah. Like, I don't know how true I feel like he knew, he's got that bumper and then Some, he knows someone who's buying yeah. it, he can can buy it off him to repair uh-huh. it. He made a quick bit of money there, but yeah. eventually- What a great got, flip that Yeah, yeah got, what a flip. business move from that guy, exactly. man. He's got it. I respect Facebook that. marketplace flip there. Re- re- good profit, but I got the bumper and- yeah, it had a lot of the stuff on it I needed. So it did save me a lot of money, but it should have stayed with the car. But there were, we found that, a lot that, of other stuff. It's insane like, how, many, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how many little it. tricks and like little things that oh, just go yeah. on with these insurance companies. Even like. things like, so some of the stuff had fell off on the side of the road um, after the crash, like wing mirror caps and fans had picked them up and they were listed on eBay. There was like a wing mirror cap listed on eBay for like a thousand pounds because they thought, oh, this is... This, Matt Armstrong will buy this yeah. because he needs to repair it. But there's this crazy amount of things which have got picked up from the crash and listed on eBay, oh. Facebook Marketplace. But it's mad. They should have all stayed with the car, but it, yeah. it is what yeah. it is. It took a long <laughs> route before it finally got to me. Um, and so what's your plan once this is uh, once this is done? Uh, I d- or you, if you're waiting to announce it, so, that's fine. Well, to be honest, I don't really know. So okay. I, I've had a, a lot of offers oh, for of the course. car, yep. but I don't know whether... Uh, how many of them are serious? How many people are actually going to want it afterwards? I do want to keep it for a bit. I do want to flex a Rolls Royce and turn up to the gym in a Rolls Royce and go to Asda in it. Yeah. And stuff like that. I, just want to, I just want it a bit. It's not really a, a me car. I kind of like the more like sporty cars that can mm. crash around a bit. It's a bit more of a flexi car that, and it, yeah. it's a lot of money to have stuck in a car. It's uh, yeah. it, having that much money in the, I, I imagine most people with, as some common sense would probably finance that type of car to keep the cash in their account to do other things. But for crash damage cars, you can't do that. You have to yep. go absolutely neck balls deep into it. All in and go cash. For it. So having a car that worth that much, that much driveway is, is quite scary. So if someone makes a right offer, I probably will sell it, but I do want to keep it 
for a bit and yeah yeah i can enjoy it enjoy i could it. pretend i am rashford for a bit i could turn up to like the training ground <laughs> just see if they let you in yeah i'll yeah. get full tints on the window and then yeah. i'll have all the fans running up like rashford rashford <laughs> 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 the <laughs> window. Fucking yeah. 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 This guy. Like, that could be a really funny video yeah, you know? yeah i thought about it I this might sound it. really stupid but how's it work with a number plate because obviously rashford's gonna have a personalized number plate do you then change it to like your one or like an old one or something like so that? he didn't have a num a personalized plate on this car i think it's because he only, he didn't have it for very long yeah. so he was yeah, probably waiting chance to yeah I, I think he just didn't have it for very long but we have got a we've got a new number plate for the car i've got uh like r011 bmx on i normally have all bmx on plates so we've got like rolls oh, yeah. bmx on it for that was like cool uh, i really want to do a road trip in it again do the same one that we've done with the bentley we have an idea of doing something with uh putting like a tent box on the roof have you seen them i um, have yeah so Do you know somebody called john olsen yes yeah, yeah so yeah. he's had a few rolls royces in the past and he like pimps them out yeah he's put roof bars on it and everything he puts like, like bikes box. all sorts like skis everything on the yeah, top yeah and yeah it so looks sick if you, name? if you john j-o-n olsen so what's this tent box so tent boxes yeah. uh, they go on the top of cars so you can uh you put your roof you yeah so john so olsen had a um a uh, rave cage. here and he put like a cage on the top and he put a load of he's um, done so much stuff with it look like i'll show you what a tent box is if though, you chip. google a tent lights. box I don't know if anyone's done it on a rolls before. I don't even know if it's actually going to work. Text box. It, what are you typing in? Text there? box. Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? <laughs> so Relief. these tent boxes, they go on top of the car like that. <laughs> on a rolls Royce. Yeah. I thought, let's do a road trip where we do like. <laughs> That's uh, fucking. Be we so have a tent enough. box on the top of the rolls and we stop off at these amazing places. But instead of staying in like a nice hotel, we're in the top of a tent box on the top of you a know, Rolls Royce. That'll do That's so it. well though, because it's like what Max was saying yesterday, like the opposite yes. of like Rolls Royce is known for like it's a prestigious luxury. car, luxury. You wouldn't do something like that to this. It's a <laughs> seven hundred pound road trip in a seven hundred thousand pound car yeah. Yeah. with a tent box that's on the top. That, that's a, idea, so that's a plan. And me it's and a Hannah formula will, for a really good video yeah, for that sure. Well. Like, yeah, again, I, we were talking about that formula with Max Fo Max Fodge, and he says his process is you take one thing and yeah, then you yeah. do the exact opposite yeah and then you work on that title and that's your video and, and that's going to well. be so fun to do like yeah. we we went and sat in these tent boxes and tested them out and was like this is going to be so do you know going onto the mountains down the south of france and just parking up the rolls and sitting in the tent box and sleeping there overnight it, the that's, people that drive past and like, really, oh my god yeah, going yeah. On? it's gonna be a once in a lifetime <laughs> thing so i really hope we can make it happen and i hope the tent box will actually work on top of the roof and you it gotta like, make it happen like, like, custom made i don't know what <laughs> yeah, you have to make to this it. Happen. but i think it'd be so cool and it's just something again that I never would have got the opportunity to do something like that ever. But yeah, the, these ideas come out of nowhere and we think that would be amazing to do. So I, I, that's the plan with it. Mm. I'm hoping we can do it. You know what would be quality for this? I don't know when it's going to be done, but Gumball Rally. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we did Gumball. We wanted to go on this year's one and they told us the car's got to be ready for uh, June because it yeah. starts in Vietnam. Yeah, we got this got exact same over. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't have a car ready for June. I couldn't yeah. get it ready in time. And there was like, well, you can ship your car over um, in I think it was like August or September time, but it's like fifty thousand pounds on a Mate, plane. It's insane. Like, no, I'm not spending. Yeah, that. like yeah. that's fifty thousand pounds. I'm never getting back. Yeah. And then like it's not only that. Then you've got to get it back as well so we missed out on this year's one but gumball is absolutely uh, class but i sometimes brilliant. think they forget that we're youtubers yeah. and yeah. we're not the billionaires that, that ship that over? That. <laughs> that's yeah. it that's it i'd love to do it. we really wanted to do it but yeah. we missed the boat for it and uh, you got next year's though i exactly. don't know what it'll be but hopefully yeah, we'll yeah. Car for that. next year definitely we can try and make it work but yeah we've missed this year's one unfortunately but so do you reckon that you reckon there's a chance that you raffle this off Oh. There's no way I'm selling <laughs> that amount of raffle Bro, tickets. To you come might, out. you mate. actually. Oh, if anyone's going to do it, do you know? Do you know how iconic be... it would be rocking up to someone's <laughs> gaff like, mate? You've got 700 grand, Marcus Rashford. I'm buying some tickets. You know, like a 21 year old lad who wins that car, and then they're like, yeah, they've, they live in a terrace house, and they park the car out on the front of parking a 700 thousand pound car on the road outside the house, like in the middle of London. Like, that's what robbed. is the insurance? Yeah, that's getting nicked the next day. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I, I just, I don't think we'll recuperate the money. I think it'd be so difficult. I mean, it could it always might be. Been. It would it just might think work. about the headlines that I would have. Though <laughs> he wins it back, or we just give it oh, back to him. Yeah. 
<laughs> keep seeing them online as well, like the raffles, like Central Sea or someone or somebody. Everybody's, yeah. Somebody did uh, Young Philly did, did yeah. his yeah. G wagon, I don't, and it does say they're making a lot. I don't yeah. actually know, but still, they work really, really well. Like it's a risk because whatever you, if you say you're going to raffle your car, mm. well, I don't know what the other companies do, but normally when when you say you're raffling the car, it has to go within that time frame. You can't just go if you don't sell the amount of tickets you need. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to extend the raffle for a week or two weeks, three weeks. You've got to go else you just lose the, the audience loses the confidence in it as well. Yeah. It's like, and as well, you don't buy a lottery ticket for a lottery that's <laughs> going to happen in a month's time or two months time. You're buying it for tomorrow. So it's the same with the cars. We, we want to, we raffle them off and then the, the live draws like the next day or oh, the, okay. for the next couple of days or something al along those lines. Uh, so it's 700 grand want, worth of tickets. Reckon you can do it. Like, that's just <laughs> crazy. Like that is, that is mad. And then I, I just, I don't think I could risk it. I don't know if I could. <laughs> All right, let me tell you, there's one level of stress is spending 180 on that. The other stress is waiting for the raffle tickets yeah. to come through. Like, yeah, Please. that's it. The website crashes and then you lose yeah. them. Oh, oh my, it's no. too much. It's too much. Yeah. Um, Another car that you had on there, which was, uh, I think is your most viewed, which was the Porsche 911. Yeah, is that, that the most was, viewed video? So yeah. weirdly yeah. enough, my most viewed video is on my second channel. So that's where we right. put all of the builds together. So what we do on the second channel is um, on the main channel, we do all the different episodes. Yep. Um, can you find it in there? I don't know. It's called Matt Armstrong Mark II. And um, what we'll do on that channel, we do like little laid back stuff, film with the phone and everything like that. But uh, the most viewed video on this is a BMW M5. Yeah. How many views has that one got? 18 million. 18, 18 minutes. So and how long is that video? Um, two hours, 58. Two, two hours, 50. So that, that video and all of those other ones all lined up there are all the episodes of combined. everyone combined as one. Smart. I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't think people would sit down and watch a video for that long, but because each one of those episodes with it's really like retentions based editing because they're singular episodes. And then, We've gone and edited them. We've taken out the intro. We've taken out the outro. So it feels like a continuous long So video. for the most part, it's still the same, but you've just got rid of that. Yeah, it's just oh, a, a... Same editing. You're not redoing the whole thing. And like, you know, my audience is like a little bit older. So yep. some of them do struggle to find the next video, you know, like at part one, and yep. then they, they have to then go on the profile to find part two. Mm. Whereas a lot of people will sit down on the TV and just watch that complete the whole way through. And then also at the same time, they might watch half an hour pause it and go, I'll watch the rest tomorrow. They come back again tomorrow as another view because they've gone off it, come back on it again. So it's a, it's an extra view because yeah. it's getting more views. The video's getting pushed more. The watch time's higher. It's getting pushed more. So these ones of the full you, build actually do a lot better. You actually have a, and I remember we spoke about this, you got a funny theory about why the watch exactly. time's so good. Do you want to just <laughs> say why you reckon... So. We, we we really really look into the analytics analytics and stuff and get proper geeky with it. But the I think most of these views are coming from people who have fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> How class is that? Have you ever that fell asleep watching though. YouTube? Yeah. yeah, and then when you wake up to it, the next a next level long video will be on. Like uh, for me, it will be like car spotting in Monaco or like a, a three hour long. NASCAR race or yeah. so it's just some crazy long video. You just wake up in the middle of the night to why the hell is this playing? I think there's something <laughs> in the algorithm which will push like, I feel like YouTube know, okay, this guy is watching through every single advert. He's got to be asleep. <laughs> Let's push him to the longest video next. And then, you know, I'll wake up to like the Sidemen. Uh, Sundays. Yeah, the Sidemen yeah. Sundays, like road trip ones. Like you wake up halfway through and they're like hide and seek in the house. It's like a three hour <laughs> video. Like what is going on? You know, it, and I think genuinely it's an autoplay. The up next views are crazy because mm. I think people are really? watching something. Or, and also another theory as well is that they watch, the click through rate is terrible on them. So people aren't actually clicking on the video because I think they see the three hour long and they're like, I'm not committing to watching three yeah, hours. It's a lot to do. But also yeah. the up next is you're watching the video and you're watching it, say a video and then a next video plays up next. You don't see how long the next video is. It starts playing. You think, Oh, it's quite interesting. You're in. And then you don't realize how long the video is and you start watching, you start a lot of the comments are like, I didn't realize this was three hour long, but I've just sat and watched this for three hours because yeah. like, they start watching and think, Oh, it's quite interesting. I want to see what happens next. And then they want to see the car built. So they keep watching, but they never would have initially 
clicked on a three hour long video because they can't commit to that time. Yeah. Same with me. I would never click on a, a three hour, four hour long video, but if you start if you watching get something, in it. you're committed. Yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of it is coming from people falling asleep, waking up halfway through, and then also yeah, you're committed to watching it once you've started. It's, yeah. it's one of them. We get a lot of views as well from people just watching in parts. Like you, you yeah. might get like three, four views from one person. They watch 30 minutes, they come back later on, exactly. next day, finish the next bit. Exactly that. that. Yeah, we find people like will sit and uh, pause it and come back and watch the next day. Like things like that. It works, works really, really well. And it's sort of a little thing that we've... Um, it's a little hack. It's really. like or a theory, I how, guess. Yeah. How, how long after the all the episodes are out does the movie version come out? If that's what you kind of call it. Couple of months because you wait a while. We also feel like we don't want to kill the main channel off Got as you. well. Like yeah, if yeah. someone's watched the full build, then they're not going to watch the main channel videos as well. Um, but then also. When you first upload those ones, we do get a lot of comments. Oh, it's recycled content. Oh, I've already watched this, but those guys have already watched it on the main channel. It's, you don't have to watch it. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people realise that. You don't have to watch it. But then a lot of new viewers come from those full build videos because it just appears on like, oh, I like this. And then next thing, if they want to watch it real time, they can watch it on the main channel. It's yeah, going to be exactly, recommended for exactly. them. Yeah. It works perfectly. It's like a kind of a little ecosystem. We've got, yeah, it works really, really well. Yeah, no, well, it's, smart, like it's so it's so interesting to see. But um, yeah, you had this. Uh, what, what would you say is your, the favorite car that you've worked on? So my favorite car of all time was a, a Lamborghini Murcielago. It was always like my dream car. Mm. So I, to, I was always wanting to own one of them. It's an old Lamborghini. Doors go up. It's a manual V12. Never thought I'd actually own one of them. And, and I thought as well with the stuff I do, it's no point in me going out and buying like a, an immaculate car because it doesn't make any sense for what I do, the story of what I do, anything like that. So it makes perfect sense for me to buy a crash one and rebuild it. And didn't think any any of these Mercialagos would ever come up crash because they're so rare. But yeah, I got a chance to buy, buy one from a, it was a track experience company where you pay to yeah. go on these track experiences and enjoy a car for a day. And one of, one of them was used as a track experience car. And I think the engine went on it, it blew up. Someone had tried to take it all apart to fix it. And couldn't manage to. Again, it's a really rare, it's a hard car to work on. And it just sat there. It sat there for seven years in their workshop. Wow. And uh, yeah, they called me up and said, we've seen your YouTube videos. I don't know if you fancy a project. And I thought, Immersial Logo, I'm never going to get the chance to buy one of them ever again. And I bought it. And actually from buying that, it was a it was the first sort of engine rebuild I've ever done. And that's when my dad started getting involved in the Got you, then. yeah. Because... He's been a mechanic. He loves doing the engine rebuilds. He was retired at the time. He's retired and he was just divering around looking for work here and there. And he says, oh, I'll help you with the uh, with the engine rebuild on that. Sounds interested. And then he sort of come onto the channel and now people prefer him over yeah. me. It's like, yeah, he's yeah, a big out. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People love him on there. the channel. So like again, it's like a different type of audience. Like the older guys relate more to my dad. And then also it's got different type of humor and he didn't want to talk in front of the camera at start. And then yeah. eventually now he's just, into it. they're filming a video as we speak now. <laughs> back, uh, one of the cars. Yeah, yeah. So oh, they're, oh, they're wow. back filming a video on the cars, but yeah, he loves it now. And it, yeah, he's become a celebrity in himself. There, there was actually one video that I saw that you did for your dad. Um, but, you bought a Ferrari. Yeah. And at the time he, he had no idea that this was going to be the case, but you rebuilt this. And then at the end, you give it to your dad as a yeah, surprise. Yeah. So oh, we, we filmed, but he worked full, on it. Yeah. yeah. So we'd filmed a full series on rebuild. We knew he liked Ferraris. Every time we'd gone anywhere, we're like, oh yeah, look at that Ferrari. It's so much better built than a Lamborghini. And was like, <laughs> so me and Matt, my, my cameraman were saying, oh, we've got to get him like a Ferrari somehow, but how can we do it in a way that he's not going to know? So we found this Ferrari, it needed an engine rebuild. Again, it was a track experience place and he helped rebuild the engine and everything. And we was hoping he wouldn't like, as he's worked on it, started to hate it, but he really enjoyed <laughs> it. It was like, this is way better than the Lamborghini. We slowly got it up. When we finally got it fixed and back on the road, we let him drive it for the first time. I was like, oh, you you drive it for the first time. Like you, you've rebuilt it. We let him take out on it. And when we got to um, at the end of the first drive, we got some new wheels for it. And then we said, right, it's all done. Everything from now, if anything goes wrong with it, you've got to fix it. Sort of looked at us like, 
what? Why? Why is that? We said, well, it's now your car, and then he was absolutely gassed. Mate, it's it, such it, a good video. It was so. It was That's so. Every man's good. dream, eh? Buying a dad like a Ferrari or, or something. Yeah, oh, it, it's, it's, but it, it's like his baby now. He loves it. Like he always keeps it clean. He only brings it out when it's sunny. Like it, <laughs> it, it looks. It's well. It's and it's like something that, again. I'd never would have been able to do, and and like. I love that I've been able to do that. It's so yeah. good. And he, he loves it as well. He's never been into like supercars or anything like that. He doesn't see the the point of spending that much money on a car, which can get you from A to B. But if, you, if it's given you, then... A that's not, such a dad know. mentality. Yeah. Way, isn't it? Yeah. Like, this gets you from A to B. That's all a bunch of nonsense. That's it. That's it. Yeah. When you've worked on them your whole life and he's worked on them for like customers and stuff, they become a norse. So, like he knows like how they're built and he knows that a Ferrari is built out of nuts and bolts, the same nuts and bolts as put together with a Fiat or yeah. something like that. So he knows what they're like. So he doesn't see the worth in them. He's like, oh, the road tax expensive and running it's expensive. But now he's got go one. He's like, I don't <laughs> yeah, mind like, yeah. the road tax. He's bought Ferrari Ray-Bans and everything. He's like, <laughs> flexing it. Yeah, he's probably flexing it. Like the matching it. kit when he goes in the car. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Full yeah. kit wanker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's proper, he's <laughs> proper. <laughs> um, is there a car that you have yet to work on that you've got maybe your eyes on or just... I would something. love to do, again, I always want to push myself to do something more and more extreme each time and learn how they are. But these hypercars, like the Paganis, the Conan's oh eggs. Oh my so God. So Lewis Hamilton's Pagani, he um, he owned one of them. It got specially made for him. And he actually had a little crash in it in Monaco. It I've seen the clip one. of that. Because a yeah. bunch of fans were like filming it. Yeah, mm. yeah. It was, uh, he had a small crash in it. And I think he sold it after that. I think it was like 10 million euros. <gasps> he sold it to someone. And I think they live in Wales. I, I can't No the way. Exact... There's no way. Some fella in Wales. I'm, I'm sure. I, can't, I'm, I could be completely wrong What here. was the type of car again? It was Not... a Pagani. A P-A-G-A-N-I. Um, it crashed it in Monaco. It was only a small knot, but again, because these cars are so rare. A-N-I. Vagina. <laughs> that's it. That's oh, the one go. there. So that top left there, that's the, that's not when Hamilton crashed it. That's when this other geezer crashed it. Oh. it, was, it I can't, do you oh, know what? Looks the, like he's actually that looks like Wales. In. Some, but, in the background. Yeah, that is Wales. So yeah. there's actually footage of that crash. Um, there's oh, he woman, completely fucked that. Jesus. Yeah, apparently they're really, really sketchy to drive. Like they're a proper handful. I think um, he do. I remember Lewis Hamilton saying it was not an easy drive. Yeah, yeah. He said it, it was sketchy. Uh, the guy who owns it in Wales, it's doing my head in now. I swear he owns like a bathroom company or something like that. <laughs> it's like, but, it, I'm telling you, oh, see people that, that do have do? those businesses, they're the ones with the peas. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. telling you. The men who make like ice cubes yeah. and stuff, yeah, they are cube. making the real oh, money. Oh, is that the geezer? There What's you. his name? Money down a drain. Bathroom hey, Tycoon. Bathroom there you go. Tycoon, yes. There you go. <laughs> What's his name? It'll be at the top, Mark right? Radcliffe. Yeah. It's Mark not Rank. Victoria Plumbing, Victorian is it? Plumbing, it says, yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, Victoria so Plumbing. We, so weirdly enough, yep. this chap, we used to, he used to be a customer of the place that I worked at, the Ford Performance place before I quit my job. Wow. So it kind of, so he used to buy Ford, Cos was a proper car guy, this guy. And, um, and he's a self-made guy as well. He used to sell like mobile phones from his garage or something like that. And Ooh. then uh, he found you could buy cheap bathrooms um, from like China. And then he started doing it from his garage and it slowly built up, built up. And it became a massive, massive um, company, a massive thing that he built up. This obviously Victoria Plum is huge now, but you know, like we've seen his, uh, we've seen where he lives, we've seen his house, his car collection, and it's crazy. And then like we've seen that he bought that and the crash he had in it. There's footage online of someone was uh, filming uh, it, it come past and it lost control under a bridge, got completely smashed up. I don't know what's happened to the car yet, but usually these cars, again, because they're so 10 million euros is crazy. Mm -hmm. No one's paying that. Car. That's it. So normally they go back to Bagani and they'll fix it because it's so rare and then it'll get put back on the road. But if some way, <laughs> he's a check in. <laughs> some company <laughs> down. <laughs> Going on. So I'm wanting to find his net worth. <laughs> no, he's a billionaire. That's all you need to know. Man. Yeah, oh my, it'd probably be like five pounds. Like, you know, like these guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, he, I think he's, he's worked his way up as well. He's built yeah. it from scratch. So like quite, oh, it was that his net worth there. I can't That was see what he sold Victoria Plumbing for. Oh, oh he yeah. actually sold it. Oh no, but well, that's he not that. be bought that. Like, yeah. Because then he spent almost half on the car. Um, yeah, that's the crazy bit. So what you think is going back to the uh, intro, uh, sorry, going back to Pagani, but you just don't know where it is right now. Yeah. So these cars, it, 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 
it's sort. I think there's going to be a, a sort of glass ceiling with the cars that I can rebuild because when they get to a certain amount of money, they just get sent back to the dealership to be repaired or they just get completely squashed and never to be seen again. So they don't want people like me to repair them, but there must be a way somehow how I can get my hands on a car like this, whether someone's had a crash in it and then maybe they're not insured or something like that. And they're like, yeah. Matt, you need to bail me out here. And then that, so like I just yeah. put, manifest it, put it out there. Look, and- if any of you guys <laughs> own a hypercar <laughs> and you fucked it, yeah, give him a ring. Um, or if anyone knows where our man Mark Ratcliffe has hidden this knackered Pagani, <laughs> yeah. let on the insurance. No. I mean, ten million is a bit wild. What, 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 do, what do you reckon that. you'd pay for the Pagani? Under a million. <laughs> oh, God. oh yeah. <laughs> Mark just great. clicked off the video. <laughs> Fucking pointless. Do you know what? We could sort a deal out. We could <laughs> sort right. a deal out. Maybe we'll repair it and yeah. we can. Uh, Work Victoria together. Victoria Plumbing brand deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put with Victoria Plumbing yeah. on the side. Do you guys need a toilet? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We can have a cabinet on the back of it. Yeah. yeah. You, you had a tent on the on the Rolls Royce. You can have a bathroom on yeah. the, yeah. On Why the Pagani. Not? Why not? But yeah, that's it. I think we're going to hit a ceiling with it, but I really want to get my hands on a hypercar to see if they are... I know they're all like handmade and like they're meant to be really, really particular and like, you know, like an expensive watch. They're meant to be built like that. Like, and I'd love to get my hands on, start taking apart to see if it actually is really like that. Because a lot of the time you find that they're, they're not like that. You yeah. find they're, they're built out of Lego The same pieces. thing as yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I'd be, I'm really interested to find out whether it is like that or not, but we'll see. And then, so we, we've spoken a little bit about the uh, the higher end cars, but I, look, we've got a lot of uh, audiences that will be either buying their first car, maybe, you know, looking to buy a car. So what we wanted to do is ask you about what do you think is the perfect first car? Oh my God, a perfect first or like, car. Ma- yeah. It's changed a bit since uh, when I was buying my fir- first car, but my favorite one, which again, for like car enthusiasts as well. Yeah. I don't know if you, I don't think you can buy them anymore, but Lupo GTIs and, or just say, say a Lupo, a normal, a Volkswagen Lupo. Everyone says it's going to be a girl's car, but I had one of these. It was so sick. <laughs> oh, look at that beast. Do, do, <laughs> yeah. Look at that beast. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess we've been talking about too many high end cars here. This is such a letdown. You can get them in one litre. What is that letdown? That is, a, that is right. Look at that. Car, right? That is Perfect a sexy car. car. Yeah. It, you can get them in one litre. You can get them in 1.4. And you can get the GTR, which is a 1.6. Look out. Look at that. They're mod- look, all you need Actually, to Actually, I can see. Okay, you're giving lowered, me the vision now. Lowered, wheels on, looks mental. And it's a small car. You can fit it in tiny parking spaces. The parts aren't that expensive expensive from it's a Volkswagen it's really well put together they're reliable as well how much do you reckon it would cost to get a, a used I one? bought mine for a thousand pounds I don't know what it, do you know if they've gone up in value I won't be surprised because they're so good really <laughs> they're, they're, underrated car yeah, right here so you're good. raising the value with yes, your so so <laughs> VWs hold their value really well though, they do they, they hold yeah. the value well. a lot of people will be like oh I'm not I won't got buy that. a Lupo because it's expensive they're expensive there we for go. what they oh, are two grand how much they're are they up? now 1.3 1.3 there Two yeah. grand for the most part, though. Two grand. That's one crazy. Five, and I bought one for a grand, like, and when I was 17, I'm 31 now. So. Go, go to the one that's like 1.7, 1.8 towards the top. How many that'll miles have you got? That'll be it? a diesel. Oh, and you can one, get yeah. them in diesel as well. Oh, it's a great all round car. Two grand. That's a 1.4. Oh, that's, that's the one I had. Amazing. A 2000 Reg as well. That's <laughs> 2000, 24 years that old. That proves how good they are. That, that is a right. classic car. How many miles on this thing does it say if you scored it? 54,000 miles. Just bed in. It's, it's, just, it's just getting what ready. What a car that is. Like, that's a throwback, that is. There's no room in the boot at all, but it's a oh, it's a mint first car. I, I think it's cheap on insurance. And then also to do your own work on, it's so easy to work on. Yeah. Volkswagens are quite an easy car to work on. And then they, they don't rust like, a lot of the Japanese cars will rust and fall to pieces, but... Uh, that is a weird, and it looks it looks so good. That has got sex appeal. Right, what? I'm gonna nip yeah. to the toilet quick. I'm <laughs> <laughs> having a wank over this. Car. <laughs> it reminds you of the car you've seen in between us. <laughs> yeah, what's the other car that he has in between us? I think that's a a cinquento. It's uh, a Fiat. Fiat cinquento or something like that. It, yeah, that pull it up, bro. That that was a that was a classic. That, they're going to be like yeah. seven, eight hundred quid. There's no way. This oh, it, this is it. Yeah, that's it. A cin- now this a is real. This Quento is or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. real. Can you even? <sighs> I know you don't see them anymore, though. Really, I've no. never seen one of them I, on the road. I don't actually think I've ever seen one. No. Let, let me talk to you about Nissan Sunny. 
A Nissan Sunny. Oh, that's a throwback. Pull up as a well. Nissan Sunny, bro. Yeah. I had a Nissan or, as well. Or like the first era of Nissan Micros the, when they were like round, oh, Nissan, bro. Oh yeah, Nissan Micros, they, they were bulletproof. This, this is a this is my first ish car. I crashed my first one, but this is my first proper car I had for ages. This, this that's 1996 what Nissan Micra. I bought it for 450 quid and it done 40,000 miles and it lasted me for six, you, seven years. Do you know what? They're, bu- they're really, really reliable cars and they're absolutely bulletproof. Easy to work on. But they just don't look as cool as the. Nah, no, it's not. It's not a good looking car. It no. I sold it during really, COVID. It? I sold it during COVID for I want to say two hundred and fifty quid or three hundred quid. I only lost two hundred quid on it in seven years. Oh my! And sold it to a, a micro rally driver. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Yeah, guy <laughs> so raced he's, micros. So he's razzing your micro yeah. about. That was well, on YouTube. Yeah, that's like the, the original micro as well. Like the, yeah, that's uh, the proper one. Yeah, they like facelifted it after that. Mine was red and all. <laughs> yeah, it became even. Oh, it actually, talking about Proddy actually in became even yeah. uglier. After no, no, this is the, the one I've been. I, 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 put this into a hedge. Oh, that's a. Oh, that's a they're yeah. crazy cars. All my friends used I to have them. My mom yeah. had this car. Yeah, are they 106s? Yeah, the 106. Yeah, and I, per- I think it was oh, a 1.2 I had. Oh, I yeah, not- so they used to bounce around like mad. Like yeah. the rear suspension on them were crazy. Like, yeah. But yeah, everyone. Probably said like, gone. yeah, yeah, that that was why mine went into a yeah. wall. Yeah, I hit, I hit a tree stump and flipped it into a bush. <laughs> yeah, I'll oh, blame the suspension. You'll be right. <laughs> yeah, bad them. Uh, bad. What cars you've crashed? You've crashed a <laughs> yeah. a car or a several oh, yeah. cars. I what crashed. Car was it? Um, so the one car that I didn't buy crash damage was my Lamborghini Gallardo. Always wanted one, and again, I, it was just like an impulse buy. Like really, really wanted to buy a. A Gardo, and I didn't really think about it for the channel. I didn't think like, oh, this is going to do well on the channel or not. It's like, I rang up a finance company and it was like, can I afford this? They're like, yes, I'm buying it. So I bought it, it was like 10,000 miles on. And then I started adding twin turbos to it. I made it a thousand horsepower. <sighs> and I then- It's like a rocket ship. Yeah, it, it's like insanely fast. And do you know, because the car's meant to be 500 horsepower and you've made it <laughs> so a thousand. It. It's, yeah, it's not it's meant not to go that. that fast. So, and- I put like racing slicks on the back of it. And then one one day, I, I only drove it in the dry and I, I drove it to the unit, did some work on it, started throwing it down. And I drove it home from the unit to go home that night, which I've done a thousand times over. And I just, as I was leaving a 30 zone to go in the 50 zone, I just kind of accelerated, changed gear. And as it changed gear, it just snapped me straight into a bush. I've, like, I've gone into a ditch. I don't really know... You just startled, you're getting thrown around all over the place and then I'm stopped. I'm like, okay, I'm in a ditch. Don't feel that bad because I'm I'm all together and I'm not like yeah. in pieces. I've opened the door and had a look at the car and it was it was just in um, so many different pieces. It was smashed to bits and I was like, oh my, how am I not hurt? Didn't yeah. realize it was like 12 o'clock at night. Some people have come out of the house and saying, you're okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just want to get the car out. And the car's sat in this ditch absolutely in pieces as well. And it's really late. The, I then have to call, um, oh yeah, this person comes out. So then I had to call the police at this point because I've been involved in an accident. The police come out and the copper recognises the channel. Oh, and no. so he's like, I said, he says, do you want to just leave it here? The next morning we'll get a recovery truck to come and pick it out because it'll be cheaper that way. Whereas if you call a recovery truck at this time of night, it's going to be extortionate. Well, by m- the tomorrow morning, it's going to be all over TikTok and everything. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, let's get this car out. So we've had to call this recovery truck. They've come down at silly o'clock and the recovery truck driver's Again, recognise the no. it's just oh. well, There was like two lads there, which turned up on like mopeds, like young lads. And um, they're like, oh my God, yeah, Matt Armstrong has crashed his car. And I'm like, look lads, if you don't post anything online, that'd be great. Cause I'm just, pe- I'm spending a fortune to get this out. And I want to be like the first to release it that I've done it. At the time, I've just released the Rolls Royce. And I was like, I don't want to then have to show I've crashed the girl. It's just going to interfere with what I'm doing. I'll release it later. And uh, yeah, got it back. I spent 1500 quid getting it out of the ditch, getting it back to the unit, just a little couple of miles down the road. Next day, it's all over TikTok. So. Oh, <laughs> the little bastards. Yeah. Did, they, did they get a video of it? Those yeah, videos? they got a video of it. So, and then I was like, oh, now I'm going to have to post the video of me crashing it. And then, moving on to that build series as well, because it was like popular at the time and everyone's tagging me, have you crashed your Lambo? Have you crashed your Lambo? And I was like, right, how am I going to long this out? Because I haven't got time to film this video of me explaining the crash. So we started putting old video clips up of um, 
me with the Lambo to like sort of show that this TikTok was fake. So like people were like, oh. he hasn't really crashed it. There's no way that's him. And then I was posting up stories, getting into the car still saying like, okay guys, video's going live at six, new video. So like people are like, hang on a minute, is it his Lambo? Like I had to kind of like extend oh it a bit my God. until I could get this video filmed and out. And then uh, we had the choice then of claiming through the insurance and taking my, taking my money out of the car. The car was scrapped, like it's really, really bad or rebuilding it myself. And I thought after re me rebuilding all of these other people's cars that have crashed, if I don't rebuild my own car, it's a bad who am yeah, I? You've yeah, got yeah. To do I've got to do it. So um, I have an attachment to the car anyway. So yeah, we decided to, with the insurance, oh, company, it was man. bad. Yeah. That's me in a ditch. Oh. <laughs> That's the back of the car. And those, are, those are like mods that you'd done, right? Yeah. 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 Cause that, look, that doesn't look no, normal. No. So rebuilding the car as well, it's hard because a lot of the stuff is aftermarket specifically made for that car. Like not, it's not come from Lambert bikini so it's a it's a yeah that's me just after the crash like instant reaction just get the phone out start filming like it's just a real coming. content creator yeah right like that was it, so i was you, like i'm not getting out without getting the phone so you weren't injured no uh, really. i don't know how everyone was like oh you're gonna get whiplash the day after but nothing sweet. i've oh, had well, that's good at least. literally so the it proves how well built the cars are to have a crash that bad and not be touched but they do crumple to pieces but i think they're designed to crumple it's to a safety pieces. thing isn't it yeah that's it and uh it's been fun rebuilding it we're nearly rebuilt it now but it's uh yeah i, I just thought how am i i can't not rebuild my own car after yeah. doing everybody else's a lot of people say oh you should just claim for the insurance but if i don't do my own car like what's the whole point of me doing everything but yeah, yeah the this was it so have you rebuilt that now Nearly there. We've Nearly. just got it started and running for the first time. Nice. It just needs all painted and everything, and it's back on the road. But good to go. It's been a hard, hard rebuild. Yes, yeah, Hannah comes There's, to get me. Yeah, that's a lamppost, part of a lamppost. <laughs> yeah, me in the ditch there. I've literally because I, I'm in my gym. Mate, I've this is actually gym. a pretty serious ditch. Yeah. You're yeah, in. That's it, me. <laughs> wow. Did they make you pay for the lamppost? The yeah, I've, we still haven't had the bill, but it's coming with the insurance. The insurance are covering the lamppost but not the car. So we can choose between, um, we spoke to the insurance and they said, if I touch the car and it's a, in a different state to it was in when I crashed it. So if I start taking the wheels off and taking bits off it, then it voids your insurance. Okay. So I had to make the choice quite early whether I was going to rebuild it or not. But then the insurance can cover the cost for the lamppost and stuff, which right. are meant to be really expensive. Really? So, yeah, it's like five grand a lamppost or something <sighs> Fuck, stupid. I yeah. Oh, I need okay. to start making lampposts. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the move. That's the, yo, see that guy doing the bathrooms? We're yeah, going to do lampposts. Yeah, lamp <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we've um, the insurance covered the lamppost and the telegraph pole, and I got the car on the ramp, and it, which immediately voided the insurance. So I've just started rebuilding yeah. it and it's it's been fun yeah that's just picking up the lamp the guys had to come out chop down the telegraph pole it's a, yeah i've got to get it in neutral and then they dragged it all the way out of this uh ditch and that's when you kind of see the extent of how bad it actually was like i i can't believe it was that bad like when i it didn't <sighs> feel that yeah the, oh mate oh, oh, that gone into a pose. mate yeah it was bad it was really bad but yeah, you, yeah, it's so, it is so impressive that you've yeah. just walked out literally like without a scratch. Yeah, I, like, I wow. thought I was dead. So do you know when you? <laughs> it, it, I always imagine like do you know when you die, you don't realize you're dead. You just, especially like an accident like that, you just you just there. And then I was like, okay, I'm still here, and I've got out. And then do you know because nobody nobody's around, and it's pitch black in the middle of the night. I'm like, am I dead? Like, at, like yeah, just floating you, about. You, and then you just like yeah, because you're going through a state of shock, and then I've called my mate because he's just left. He's just left. I say like, oh, can you come and help me? I'm in a ditch, and I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not dead then because he picked up the phone. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, just a quick check, like you're right. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it's a, it's a crazy experience, but at some point, I had it in my mind that it, driving these powerful cars, it's bound to happen at a point like yeah. you're going to lose control of it. Everyone say, oh, you're a bad driver, but if I'd have got home that night, it wouldn't have made me a good driver. It, yeah. it, like, I drove that car plenty of times back and forth. It only takes one slip up and it can and snap gone, you. Yeah, yeah that's um, it. The next thing I wanted to do quickly um, <clears> as we start to wrap this up was 50,000 pounds. Yep. You have to buy three cars. Okay. Build a three car garage with 50,000 pounds. What are you putting in it? Can't go over by a penny though. Right? Not one pound over 50. Oh my days. So I think one car that I'd go for is- can I, Sorry, can I just say, one has to be a hatchback, one has to be a coupe, one has to be a sedan. Oh. 
Ooh. There we go. For a spanner in the works. Yeah, you could, yeah. Coupe. Let's go for an E46 M3. So it's an older M3, like 2000 M3. The, it's, it kind of looks a bit vintage, no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really you, good cars. You know who has one? Casper. Casper. Oh, yes. I was going to say Casper. I reckon you one. can get a good one around £20,000. I, I did ha I did have one myself and I regret getting rid of it, to be fair. that Look at that. That is before they started putting all silly electrics and stuff in the car and everything like that. That's a wicked car, that. It looks yeah. cool. It's 2003. I reckon you can get one under twenty thousand pounds. Let's have a look. Here we go. Yeah. Oh. oh. No, prayers no. up. Prayers up. You watch. It's gone up this like the loopers. Knowledge needed here. Come on. Here we go. All right. Let's have a look. Ninety-seven cars. All right. Here we are. Oh, they're the re no, that's the e the top one is categorised. The what the the one underneath is too old. That Keep that's a e thirty six. Keep going. There's an e forty six. Eleven thousand nine hundred and ninety five pounds. That one there convertible. All right, not particularly the one I choose, but yeah, that's not bad. All right, we'll we'll, for the grand. one you want, we'll call it fifteen grand. Yeah, let's say that. That's fifteen. Fifteen grand. grand. You got thirty-five left now. I want a Lupo GTI. <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, so the level above the one that you had originally. Yeah, a Lupo what GTI. Was that, two grand. Call it two. I reckon no, the more. The GTI. Oh, I reckon oh, the more. How much was that one? Do you know at the time they were around three to four thousand pounds? I'm gonna. It's probably five. gonna pick up. They're gonna be like five or ten grand oh, now. God. Lupo GTI, what a car. How much for sale? Any of these GTIs. That looks like a GTI, that's silver. <laughs> 10 grand. 10 grand. What the, the hell has happened to them? I'm Volkswagen's crazy. 40,000, mate, 10 grand. So that's 40,000 miles. Yeah, yeah, all right. right so you're at 25 you got, grand, you've got 25 to go. And you that's need to you got, just get a coupe now. You no. Oh, the. Because the, the BMW was a sedan, no? It's got no, a it's back. a coupe, and no. he had two. Only two okay. doors. Only had two and a sedan. This is a hatchback. Do you know what? I reckon I can do this. I reckon I can do this. I reckon an Audi RS4, oh. the 2007 one. It's got V8 in it and it's manual. Oh, come on. Mate, if you I reckon to come it. away here <laughs> with a... They're quite similar. Uh, I guess the M3 and the M, uh, and the RS4 are quite similar. Like they're quite competitors, but I've always wanted one of those RS4. RS4. If these have gone up as well, okay, I've got a good eye for cars then because I should have bought all these cars back in oh, the day. Oh, twenty two grand! It. You're joking? What the hell? Are they I mean, it's Ford? within yeah. budget. Yeah, you, but like, you have done it to be fair. That red one, that that red one there. That's looking nice. So you've got cash to spare, mate. Have I? Oh, yeah. Well, you can spend well, it on I the mods. Start modding them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, that car, it do, it's a bit of a sleeper, but yeah, they've got a V8 in them. They sound amazing. And uh, I yeah, remember four that doors. car. I remember always looking at that car thinking that's the bollocks. Yeah, four doors. And then that same engine is used in the Audi R8. So Really? It's yeah, the same so engine? The V8 R8 has the same engine as that. So it's... Uh, it's a good, it's a good car. It's a cool car. You can put the dog in the back, and it goes fast. It sounds good. It's a wicked car. Do you and think is it, is is there a supercar that you think's like that you've driven in and you just don't understand the hype? Supercar, that I've, or that you've just, you've sat and you've got. I just don't see why people are paying this for that. Yeah, I know what the, you're gonna say, Cal. The, huh? I know what you're gonna say. Oh right, okay. What was you saying? Don't know what you're no, say. well. Um, it's not really a supercar. It was just like an expensive car. It was the original, uh, and it's not the new ones, the older G wagons. Oh, oh they, yeah, yeah, mate. Oh, I'm we not a we fan did the gumball in them. In one They're bad. Was, we did yeah. gumball in it, it's and mate, stinker. mate. Every time no, he turned, it was like, like we were tipping it. over. Yeah, no, they're just <clears> like a status car. Yeah, like, they're just a status. Well, I got one when I went to America, and we drove from LA to Vegas in it. And I was like, yeah, G-Wagon. Yeah, you go around a corner and it's like, whoa. whoa. Yeah, like it was a boat. It's like, it's not- They it's look just great a flex. though. Yeah, they do look great. great. Yeah. It's just, it's just one to And take I love an the Instagram doors photo. as well. Like it's a proper latch. Yeah, slam the door. Yeah, yeah, it's just one to take an Instagram photo next to. But yeah. there's not really, um, I can't say I've, I've really strove a supercar, which I've not really enjoyed. enjoyed at the minute. Like they're all good for all different reasons, yeah. I think. Um, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Like I've, I've really enjoyed them all for different reasons. Like yeah. we've got a McLaren at the minute, which we rebuilt and that's really surprised me. It drops to bits and it's not, you know, like you touch the interior and it's like squeaking and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, but it yeah. drives so well. Like it's really, I would never tell anyone to get a McLaren who doesn't know how to repair a car, right. but, they, but they do drive amazing when they do drive. But sometimes you'll start it and it will say like, 
something something fault and you're like amazing and then you turn it off and you turn it back on again and it's fixed so right but it, it has those quirks but yeah. it, there's is good it, size is it, is it the on. most underrated car yeah the, What's the, the McLaren oh, oh underrated car and this could be by the way at any decent any price point one that you just think you're getting so much car for the money yeah what have i really what have i I can't really say an Aston Martin's unrated, can I? Like that that was that's which, been which really one are you talking it. about? The Aston Martin So I've got an Aston Martin Vantage. The one you fixed yeah. up in that video. Yeah, yeah, fixed it up and I thought I was just gonna buy that car, do it up, and then Get raffle right. it off. And I kept it and I still got it now. It's been years and years and years. And uh it's been an amazing car. Like it's it does everything. It looks cool, it sounds cool, it's comfortable to drive, it does it does everything and like, yeah, they are they are expensive, and you do expect it from Aston Martin. But there's other cars which you pay a lot more for and get a lot less. Yeah. But I'll what tell you, you one what car you? which is under like it, which is not great. The Maser Maserati is. Oh uh, yes, yeah. I think this is like a, a well known thing. Yeah, isn't it? we got a Maserati Gran Turismo, and I barely draw. I have ruined it to be fair. I put like a wide body <laughs> kit on and everything like that, but. They're not great. They're not, not fun to drive. No, the tech is slow and like they're just not. I've never really seen great. that good things about Maserati that. watching this now. Like, yeah, yeah, they're, <laughs> no! they're not. They're not great. But how it, many cars yeah. do you have? Uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two, 22 cars. cars. <laughs> what? Fuck. So there's some cars that we bought. What the fuck are you putting them all? Yeah, yeah. There's it, including the vans and things. It doesn't yeah. feel like I've got twenty two because they're scattered around everywhere. Some yeah. are at the unit. There's one which is in America still. There's like bits of the house, and, but and there's some cars which we've not released on the channel yet. Like yeah. we've had to buy them and then like we're waiting to release them. So it doesn't feel like that. And it that's crazy to say twenty two, <laughs> but like it, I only drive about two of them. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it cool though that it all started with that Bentley? Like yeah, from Bentley, yeah, yeah, the Bentley yeah. Continental all the way up to... Matt, it's mental. And I, I always looked at other YouTubers when uh, we was filming those videos back then thinking, oh my God, how this car collection they've got, how can they afford to keep every single one? And now I've just become that. <laughs> I, I was thinking like, there's no way I'll be able to do that. Or why would you want to do that? And then now we've kind of ended up being... Like that. you're that guy I don't want to get rid of it yeah to see yourself become the villain yeah that's it you, you work on them so much and you get you gain such an attachment through working on them and they get they get their own personalities of working on them like oh I'm going to go and work on this car at the minute and it gets its own little personality you name them yeah it's it literally like a we're going to see an Sherry, article like, it, you see that article it. where the guy like shags the cars oh, <laughs> so this going to come out to you and he's like oh honestly just a class personality yeah yeah, yeah. they exhaust this Oh, she'd be moaning at me all day. Like, yeah, it's it's uh, they get their own personality. You end up keeping them just because you have that little attachment to them, yeah. rather than whether it's costing you money or not. But no, it's wicked to be in that Real. situation to to be able to do that. But yeah, I I can't. That's the problem I have. I think you yeah. get an addiction to keeping them. Absolutely. Look, Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure chewing yeah, your man. ear off about cars. I honestly <laughs> to hear somebody um, who well has 22 cars <laughs> and has worked on uh, some of the crazy ones. I hope the uh, the Rashford car sort of you're onto the final it's your nearly final there. home stretch. It's nearly that. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, how that all plays out, and of course, uh, all the videos coming out in the future. If you guys want to check out Matt's stuff, his link will be in the description or in the show notes. Until next time, we will see you guys later. Bye bye. Bye.